It's the end of February and we're out here in the Arboretum in the snow. What could we really expect to see right now? Well, here, partly under the snow, is an erica, a heather known by its scientific name of Erica carnea, and it is in full flower. In fact, it started flowering back in January. There are a couple of dozen species of Erica uh, native to Europe, and just two are found in Norway, but this is not one of them. You might have seen Erica tetralix, which is common in the mountains around Bergen, or Erica cinerea, which you only see if you go right to the west coast. Um, another heather, which is common also in, the, in woodlands and also here at the Arboretum, is Caluna vulgaris. That's a different genus, but it's closely related to Erica. All of these species, however, flower, as you might expect, in the summer. This is the winter heath. Erica carnea, also known as the snow heath or vorling in Norwegian, Schneeheide in German. Uh, and all of these names point at how unusual it is to be flowering at this time of year. It's late March and we're back at the heather garden in the Arboretum. The snow is gone, the, the sun is out and it's uh, still a little cool in the shade. Um, but most of the plants are not flowering at this time of year. You can probably think of a few exceptions, notable ones, and especially if you're walking around right now, you'll see the crocuses in flower, you'll see some narcissus already, the early ones. Um, but these are kind of the exceptions, aren't they? Most plants flower in the late spring and through into the summer. Why would a plant flower at this time of year? Well, for the narcissus and the crocus, it's uh, perhaps more obvious. They get all of their reproduction done before the leaves on the deciduous trees come out and, uh, and block out all the, the light. With Erica carnea, it's not so obvious. Um, but if we want to find out an answer to that question, we shouldn't start by looking here, because this is not where they come from. We should go to their natural habitats, which is in coniferous forests and, uh, and rocky slopes in the Alps uh, through into the Balkans. And um, there we can see well, that Erica carnea dominates the understory of, of these forests, much in the same way that, uh, that Caluna vulgaris does here. It's really a, a carpet of pink when it's in flower. And yet Caluna vulgaris is flowering in the summer and Erica carnea is flowering right now in the winter. So what could the possible explanations be for that? One potential explanation would be to do with their pollinators. Now, if all plants were to flower at exactly the same time, then the honey And this can be useful, for example, if they are adapted to very different conditions. Erica carnea, for example, is notable in Erica for being a, a growing well on more basic soil. And you can imagine that if you put a cross Erica carnea with other species that are more uh, adapted to acid conditions, that the, uh, the resulting hybrids may be more poorly adapted to either acid or to alkaline soils. And this could be true for any trait that you, you happen to look at. So, by flowering at different times of year, you avoid this wasted effort of producing poorly adapted progeny. But this has a, another effect, of course, and that is that um, if uh, uh, two populations are reproductively isolated, over a period of time, they may diverge uh, to form new species. What's this the case uh, in the origins of Erica carnea? 
Possibly. But to find this out, we need to investigate the, uh, the, the, how it was with the common ancestor of Erica Carnea and its nearest relatives. We need to find out where that ancestor was. We need to find out on what soil uh, it grew and at what time it flowered. And this is exactly the kind of research that we are doing in the background here at the University Gardens. But this is a story for another time.